Good morning, everybody. Welcome to September 30. Best FN Dad here with your quick COVID update. Tomorrow is my birthday, October 1st. I'm a Libra. I want to talk about long hauler syndrome. So yesterday, our COVID numbers here in the United States was 127,000 cases. So we're plateauing, but I tell you, this is temporary dip. It's going to go back up as we get the numbers in from uh, football games and school going back and all that good jazz. The Midwest starts to light up more Wisconsin as it heads towards Chicago and, you know, Idaho and all these states. Stay safe, everybody. Get vaccinated. Remember, it takes you two months before you really feel confident, uh, fully vaccinated. And um, and no worries about the Pfizer booster. Get it when it's your turn. Uh, Jane, uh, J&J will probably you'll get a second dose here uh, when it's all said and, and done. And Moderna is proving to be the most durable. I wouldn't call it the best vaccine, but the most durable vaccine. And uh, again, Pfizer submitted their data for uh, five to 11 years old, showing a a very good safety profile and protection profile, but more importantly, good levels of uh, neutralizing antibodies uh, in young kids who received uh, the Pfizer dose. And um, that's really important. It's the neutralizing antibodies we want to get to, but that also really primes our immune system to fight off uh, COVID. It's showing good protection. I have a five-year-old, and this will probably all get approved and everything around Halloween, maybe into first week of November. And Eric and I cannot wait to vaccinate our five-year-old. Uh, and then we'll have a relatively normal Christmas and uh, the usual precautions, though, everybody who's coming over for Christmas needs to be vaccinated, period, end of story, hard stop. Um, I've kept my family COVID free for a year and a half and I ain't fucking this up now. So, and the reason why is today's talk, long hauler syndrome. So a recent study out of Oxford check this shit out, looked at 270,000 people with long haul syndrome, 270,000 people who recovered from COVID, okay? And what they found is one third, one out of three people who had COVID, who survived COVID, one out of three still have symptoms after three to six months. So this really goes to debunk the whole notion that you, hey, man, COVID is just the, the flu. Dude, stop saying that. You sound stupid when you say stuff like that. That's old information. That's last year. Aren't we beyond this? Don't we understand we're closely approaching 700,000 American deaths in a year and a half? That's not even the, the worst flu season might be 100,000 people. Remember when this all started, people were like, like, trying to deny this for some reason, spreading misinformation, talk, comparing COVID to the flu and how flu kills people, more people. And why are we panicking? Dude, we're at 700, almost 700,000 American deaths, dude. And those are the ones that are reported. Could be, I think it's even higher than that. And the number worldwide is even higher. So in this Oxford study, they looked at 270,000 people and one out of three still had at least one symptom three to six months afterwards. What are these symptoms? Well, the most common one is shortness of breath. Still can't catch your breath, still can't breathe. And we're talking about, you know, as the age goes younger and younger and younger, you're talking people in their prime of their lives, 40s, 50 years old, they should be working, they're office managers. They they are a very vital to our economy, opening up, you know, restaurant workers, everybody, teachers, you know. These are not old smoking men, like 80 year old men, like the Chinese data. This is young people having symptoms uh, three to six months after recovering from COVID. So trouble breathing, brain fog. Dude, you know, <laughs> I mean, comment if you already have coworkers who seem like they have brain fog. <laughs> they don't have COVID, but they have brain fog. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's like most of the world. No, this is no, no laughing matter. Brain fog, very common. Headaches. If you suffer from migraines or have ever had a real bad headache, imagine have, still having daily headaches three to six months um, after having COVID. Why headaches, Dr. Reed? Well, it's inflammation. Remember, we learned a lot about COVID. COVID, cytokine storm, all this sort of stuff. It's an inflammatory response. That's all headaches are, really. Most headaches. Or it's like a inflammation around the lining of your brain. So it's easy to see how... COVID can lead to that. 
Uh, what are other symptoms? GI problems. People three to six months are still having stomach upset, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. One of Erica's friends um, is about uh, you know three two weeks recovered from her COVID, and she's still having diarrhea. You know, and for those of you who've ever had diarrhea, you know it's miserable. Uh, fatigue just tired. Now imagine you're going to have this entire subset of the population that are chronically fatigued. Man, I'm telling you, you're going to need, we're going to need specialty clinics to treat all of these people. So as the data keeps coming in, we get better and better informed about COVID. So it's not, it's not the flu. Um, just because you survived it doesn't mean you're you're done with it. And we know that just because you had it last year, you know, people are catching COVID this second time. People are dying it from they survived it the first time, but they're dying the second time. We have good data on that now. We know that that happened. So just because you had COVID last year doesn't mean you have lasting immunity. Now, interestingly enough, studies have, are showing that if you had COVID last year and you get one dose, of uh, mRNA vaccine, you actually have higher levels of neutralizing antibodies. So yes, there is this natural immunity, but vaccinations cause your natural immunity to work. They help your immunity work without having the risk of catching COVID. Dr. V, you know, this it really irritates me. And um, I need to do a better job of not calling people fuckers and, and stupid asses, but it just drives me nuts, man. Like they'll say, well, what's the point of getting vaccinated? If vaccinated people can pass on the on the vac can pass on the virus, and, and vaccinated people can catch the virus. What's the point of getting vaccinated? Like you sound so stupid. Like you don't understand risk mitigation. Ninety-five percent of people in hospitals are unvaccinated. So yes, you can still get hospitalized. You can still catch COVID, but your chances of having a bad outcome is greatly reduced to like 12, 13 times reduced. Um, so I'll I'll take my chances, you know, with the five percent hospitalization rate versus ninety five percent. So, and and now we have really strong data: two hundred and seventy thousand cases that this Oxford study looked at. I mean, it's really powerful uh, information uh, regarding long haulers uh, syndrome. And for those people who are cut, who are recovering from long COVID, please comment with your experience. You know let people know like it's no effing joke man <sighs> see i said effing instead of fucking <laughs> i'm getting better <laughs> all right i'll be back again tomorrow with another COVID update thanks everybody